party delving further into the world stone tunnels beneath Gracchus to lost the trail of Grove, but exploring other passages, managed to encounter other dead, which they took prisoner, as well as a strange magical office, and a treasure beyond their expectation, a red dragon egg, hat in the forges of Gracchus. Lucas has found himself the father of a red dragon egg. Where shall the party head now that is lost? A lady, unwilling to serve alongside of it, found a new part in the bar. So, you're still in Grakovstuk. Uh, Lucas, the person that went out to find the magic items, a different messenger comes to you and says that they're here on behalf of the person you sent looking for magic items. Alrighty. What kind of message do they get for me? Uh, they tell you that they know a trader in Grakelstug that should be able to help you somewhat. Well, better go find little John, since he has the rest of my money. We'll go meet this trader. You are introduced, well, you are brought to an actual office of a trade house and introduced to Ilsa Henstak, a female Dwergar and supposedly a member of the Merchant Council. She's also a caravan master. Sends out the caravans to get materials to bring back to Grakelstug, as well as sell the wares of the Blade Bazaar to outside markets. She prides herself on always arriving at her destination ahead of schedule. As she likes to say, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. She has heard about some of your exploits, and she's taken an interest in you. Obviously, she knows that at least Lucas is looking to buy magical items, but she's also caught wind that you apparently had some dealings with the guards, and she is willing to make an offer. Oh, what would that offer be? Well, you are brought into her well-guarded office, and immediately she shows you a drawer where there are coins and jewelry from all over the surface world. Alrighty. She, she tells you that she has tracked the pieces to a number of Darrow, who are using them to pay for food. But, if you can figure out how these Darrow are getting surface currency and jewelry, she can help you get to wherever you're going, whether that be the surface or the Underdark. She knows some, uh, Valuable advice on the route out of a Grackles dude. Just want to know how these Darrow are getting these coins and stuff. That's it. The Darrow are not necessarily even let out of the city, let alone getting this kind of treasure. She picks one up. This is elven coin. What kind of Darrow trades with elves? Did Aaron pick up an elven coin? Good response, thanks. <laughs> so I'm assuming you don't know if you picked up an elven coin. No, I think don't think I have one. I don't know if you have it, but I remember you. I remember an, in, in, an exchange of you remembering about the coin. So I remember you having some sort of roll. Yeah, she recognized the coin, but I think you had it. I never picked it up. It was over by the obelisk. I definitely didn't see it. I it mean, was off the body of one person. Was it off the body? Yeah. It was off the body of the Darrow that was uh, in, not excavating, but uh, studying the obelisk. I even made the joke about you being like, ooh, coin, and just dropping it into your coin belt, lost forever. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that this has something to do with that stupid obelisk? Did we ask the Darrow how, where that coin came from? No, you never asked anything about the coin. Wow. No. All you know is that Aaron recognized it as a Shilmer, a type of ancient elven coin. Is that the, the same kind of coin that she's showing right now? I or mean, she had the... some. Okay, so they, they are just really random items. And I believe you still have the notebook on her notes 
Um, probably. Or did you give that up? I might have given everything up if I'm thinking about that. I don't know, I thought you reviewed everything. You're supposed to have these notes. I did. I don't take notes, I just rewatch the sessions. <laughs> and I did not get to finish rewatching last session. Well, did anybody put in their items thing, the nope thing, otherwise we probably gave it to her, to uh, Erd. No. <sighs> I'm no longer the same character. I know. I was, I was referring more to the people that are very quiet tonight. We've seen you're only getting further ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well... Everyone's here, right? <laughs> They're all here. <laughs> I might have an idea about how this is happening, but I may have to go talk to uh, Captain Erd again. Speak to an old acquaintance of ours we just made. So, are you leaving this merchant that you just met? Well, I just explained that I would have to go talk to Erd, as I think I have an idea, but. I'm gonna have to go question that other Darrow more about the obelisk, because I think we got that weird magics. She sighs very well. But I was also told that you want to purchase magical items, of which I happen to have a few. That wasn't my intent. What if, do you have in stock? Well, I know you were seeking a bag of holding. That's an was. easy enough thing, I've got that. I do not have any cloaks of protection, nor do I have slippers of spider climbing, let alone in boot form. <laughs> but I do have another, or a handful of other options. What might that be? Well, I recently purchased a large stock of an alchemist. I happen to have a lot of potions in store. Like what? She shows you, and she has... A potion of uh, storm giant strength, a potion of cloud giant strength, a potion of longevity, a potion of vitality, a potion of speed, a supreme potion of healing, a superior potion of healing, a potion of clairvoyance, oil of etherealness, and a filter of love. What is that one? That's the thing you think of Lena. Oh. <laughs> And she left with it. Now you'll have to buy another. But yes, it's a love potion. I mean, she might still put it use. You never know. That's true. Unless she asks if any of these things interest you. I'm assuming the health potions are going to be expensive. Yes, yeah, so you said one's supreme. One is supreme, one is superior. Those are both expensive. Very. Uh, two of those. Those just increase your strength, right? The Cloud Giant and Storm Giant. Clairvoyance, that gives you... Uh, that give you... The Potion of Clairvoyance. Uh, you gain the effect of the Clairvoyance spell. I forget. Oh, that just basically shows you what, where you're going, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I'd have to look at this spell. Clairvoyance. Uh, you create an invisible sensor within a range in a location familiar, familiar to you. A place you have visited or seen before, or in an obvious location that is unfamiliar to you, such as behind a door, around a corner, or in a grove of trees. The sensor remains in place for the duration, and it can't be attacked or otherwise interacted with. When you cast the spell, you choose seeing or hearing. You can use the chosen sense through the sensor as if you were in its space. I don't think I need the potion of longevity. Don't want to live longer? I don't need to be a kid. Been that. Pretty sure it doesn't de age you and yes. just make you live longer. It does. I'm looking at it right now. Your physical is age it? is reduced by 1d6 plus 6 years to a minimum of 13. Each time you drink a potion of longevity, there's a 10% cumulative chance that you instead age by 1d6 plus 6. But I would oh, get geez. younger. I didn't realize that's what they did. I thought it just added life. So you can just keep bringing it. Yeah, no, it's a whole bunch of fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. So yeah, if I, if I were to drink that, I would already be reduced down to 25 automatically with the, for the plus 6. 
and then whatever I would roll for the d6 would put me down even further. So I wouldn't be quite kid yet. I don't know. And what was the other one? Um, there was one more. Potion of Vitality, Oil of Etherealness. Potion of Vitality gets rid of exhaustion and uh, any diseases. Oil of Etherealness, I believe. You can coat it and then you can stab things on the ethereal plane. I think it's you coat yourself and then you're on the ethereal plane. I don't know, we used it in the, the Tomb of Annihilation. Yep, cover a medium or smaller creature along with its equipment. Applying the oil takes 10 minutes. It gains the effect of the etherealness spell for one hour. So yep, it allows you to go to the ethereal plane. Well, personally, I don't think I either have the money for those health potions there or need the other two. Like giant potions I got a uh, few strong guys already in the party. They could be stronger. Uh, they could. Eight hours or whatever it is. I think it's eight hours. But I will take a bag of holding. Well, the bag of holding is 500 gold. Alrighty. It's a good thing I brought you along, John. And the potions of giant strength only last one hour. Alright. Now, I believe I got a captain to go talk to. Maybe I'll be able to bring you back an answer. Well, you head back to the guardhouse. You ask to see the captain, and you are led back into her office. She looks up from her desk, obviously not expecting another visit from you. No, this is quite unexpected. Oh, Christ, I completely forgot what I've been doing with the dragon. And up to you. It's now hatched. I know. I don't think the innkeeper would appreciate a little red dragon actually running around. And I guess I'll have it riding on my shoulders keeping it from flying. Try to train it to not fly within cities. Well, I mean, it's like four feet long, I guess would be the correct term. And uh, just under 200 pounds, if you're willing to keep that on your shoulders. Christ. This thing's bigger than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Um, remember how big the egg was? Yeah, I remember now. It was like four feet and 100 some pounds. Uh, guess we're just walking it like a doggo. There's no way I can carry I'll that thing carry on my shoulder. I don't think there's a, it wouldn't let you either. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to be carried. You would need I mean, to essentially make grapple checks. And wouldn't most people walk like not appreciate a red dragon just be like as a pet in this city? Well, especially considering the fact that she is sentient. Just because she hasn't learned how to talk yet. Well, I didn't say I leashed her. Or, or like a child, you know, get her a leash backpack. So she feels like she's being independent, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> so lie to her. Got it. <laughs> ah, parenthood. <laughs> Either way, we would have figured out some way to keep her next to us. Hopefully not fly off with me. But back to her. You learn anything about that uh, Darrow and that obelisk? Uh, she tells you she has no news about the obelisk. She did interrogate both Darrow extensively. But she was not able to get much. It didn't seem like they knew all that much. I they simply talked to Darrow that he brought in. The female. What was her name? Well, she... Leaky? Picky? Uh, uh, her name was... Licky. have to get back to that section. Tell you still have cards. It was something like Plinky. The... Plinky, yes. Plinky. Oh. Erd brings up the fact that, uh... The one thing she did gain from it is she learned that there was a conspiracy against the High King amongst the Council of Savants. And... That was the one thing she was truly looking for. She doesn't even need Drogo anymore. She'll still have him arrested. Because he was obviously a co-conspirator. Yeah, I'm but sure that'll be a lot easier now he doesn't have his spells. Nonetheless, she got what she needed. And uh, she did mention that she'd have her reward for you. And since you're here, she will offer you the reward. You may take your two captives as slaves. She's already had them outfitted. What do you mean 
I outfitted. She stands up and leads you down into the uh, the prison, to the cells, and she rounds the corner, and you recognize them, the two Darrow, Plinky, and did the other one even have a name? No, he was just a random one, I think. Yeah, so I will generate a name for him. <laughs> What is Google doing? What are you doing? There we go. Ah, his name is Gribek. And you see the two of them wearing what you can only describe as very strange armor. Gribek, the one you found standing over the uh, pit, Erd explains, has been converted into a hammerer. It is a punishment for Dwergar that did not work hard enough on behalf of, well, those that employed them. It's essentially a digging machine with the Dwergar strapped into it. More specifically, it is what the Dwergar, no, uh, the Erd explaining this, it is what the Dwergar refer to as a pain engine. It converts the suffering of whoever's inside it into energy to power the device. So, Gribek looks this currently. Oh. Hmm. I can't say it. I'm afraid I would And sadly, there isn't artwork for the second one, but Plinky has been converted into a Screamer, another type of pain engine, and this is the punishment for Dwergar that gossip or plot against their superiors. It relies on the same mechanics as the Hammer, but instead of uh, instead of drills, hammers, and picks being attached, it I mean it does have a drill as well, but it can also emit a sonic frequency that can is strong enough to clear rubble. So she asks which one you would like. You may take either. My morals are in question now. <laughs> would you prefer the screamer or the hammerer? I mean, couldn't the screamer also hurt us? If you get in the way, if you stand in front of it... Are they still conscious and able to actually, like, speak properly? They're not able to speak anymore, but they are definitely conscious. They're aware of their suffering, but we can't have them talking back. Now I wish I had the rest of the party with me. I was under the assumption they were. No, I had brought just little John because he had my money. He, he was literally carrying half my other money. <laughs> but... John, what do you think? Me. Don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm distracted by this dragon here. Oh. Probably oh, would be. <laughs> well. What is the name of your dragon again? Althea. Althea. In your opinion, Erg. Well, it's Black Skull. Which one of these two is more efficient? She said, it depends on what you want. If you want one that is sturdier, then you go at the hammer. If you want the one that is able to... Scream. Do more than just hit thing. Then you want the screamer. Should be noted, though, the screamer gives away your position quite easily. Well, since Plinky can't talk no more, I guess we'll go with the hammer. Very well. You get Gribek strapped into the Hammerer pain engine. He's basically just become a servitor. I mean, does he... How does it work? Like, how does it obey commands? Like, can they disobey? Oh, yeah. He obeys commands. But is he capable of He's disobeying? He's lobotomized. He's not fully lobotomized. He is still conscious in there. And if he disobeys an order, then he suffers more. Okay. Which is good, because that powers the engine. But can't... can they kill themselves? Nope. Okay. Any attempt to harm themselves, uh, the armor locks up. Gotcha. So we gotta know how to build their machines. They don't have steam power, they have pain power. Everything down here runs on pain. To a degree. <laughs> they are a slave society. I know. Which is one reason why I'm having a little bit of a moral quandary here. 
I mean, if it bothers you that much, we can just go into the market and buy a slave more to your preference. <laughs> Do they have sexy ones? <laughs> You're not there, but yes, there are sexy yes. ones. Do they have sexy ones? <laughs> no, I didn't ask for a sex slave. I asked for a sexy slave. There's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> there are slaves that are sold for the aesthetic appeal. There we go. Excellent. Aaron suddenly decides to go out into the uh, slave market. It's the only other one with money. <laughs> Anyways, I suppose that concludes our business. She nods. I hope to maybe learn a little bit more about that obelisk, but... Well, then take this, and she pulls out the notebook that uh, Plinic was taking notes in. Well, then that will help. Or at least Aaron. She'd probably understand it better than I will. She just shrugs. I couldn't find anything of use in that. No. If you have any other business in the city, I suggest you get it done. Otherwise, you have free reign to leave. That is the plan. And with that, I will leave. She bids you farewell. We'll find Aaron. You are followed by the clanking noise of your hammer as he stomps behind you. Well, I already Drool know Eldeth's gonna be happy with mouth. this. Eldeth? Eldeth? Oh, yes. For my, I was mistaking Eldeth for Elena. Oh. Me too. Uh, I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, Eldeth will be torn between the fact that she wants to see a Dwergar suffer, but she doesn't like that the Dwergar are able to build such things. It's wrong. It's immoral. She is generally good. She's just racist. I mean, so are half the people in D&D. <laughs> well, once I find Aaron, I'm gonna... On our, on our way back, I'd be like, what exactly are we doing? Didn't really understand any of that conversation. Well, that trader I met with earlier, my friend, offered us a way to possibly get out of here faster. And possibly up to the, you know, light. In exchange, that we find out how the Darrow getting their money, or more specifically, the outside currency that they have. Now, I think that's got something to do with that obelisk, but I'm not quite sure. Which is why we went and talked to Erd. <coughs> I'd forgotten about the reward. I honestly wasn't expecting it to be a slave, especially since I thought I had gotten out of that business. But, we're going back to Aaron now, and... Hopefully she can figure something out, and we don't draw more attention to ourselves. As I glance at the dragon. Oh, so we have to go back to the obelisk. That is a possibility. Actually, knowing us, it's more likely. Yes, when I get back to Aaron, I will explain what's going on and see if she can't decipher something. I need a quick re-summary. But I just did a re-summary. Do it better! <laughs> But, okay, what are you asking me? Okay, so... I, I'm i thinking that the Darrow are getting these coins and things somehow from the obelisk. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just going off the coin that we found. What if... Because she said it just appeared. Yeah, can I make like some kind of intelligence check to get like a, a light bulb moment or something? <laughs> and, and I did give you the note, her notebook. That I studied? You didn't study it last time. You guys just took it. Okay, but in between the time, I would have looked at it. No, because you guys handed it over to the guards. Yeah, there wasn't much time for you to really... He only just got it back. Oh. So okay. now you can look at it. Now I can look at it. Well, obviously, it's written in Dwarvish, but it is a long list of random items, primarily coins and jewelry. Uh, there are no dates, but there are some entries that appear in different handwriting. And you basically make out that things just keep randomly popping into existence in front of the obelisk. It's Santa. If we want something, guys, the obelisk will make it for us. Out of character, because I don't think Lucas would know what the obelisk is doing. I think that's a teleport obelisk, isn't it? Is there such a thing? I mean, magic random, can do anything. Random yeah. items from the surface are appearing in front of this obelisk. That's the 
the best guess for me is it's teleporting things. But is it just a one way or is it two way? Well, it's also damaged. I thought we fixed it. No. You fixed a chip in it. Oh. It's, it's lots of chips. It's chip. still cracked. Yeah, it's cracked. It looks like somebody's been trying to take the material. Well, in the last case, I believe we got our answer. This time I'll bring the group to the trailer. The group to Ilsa. To Ilsa, yes. And once again, she invites you back into her office and asks if you have any news. Well, it seems that there's obelisks down some... What's the name of the place? The Whirlstone Tunnels. Whirlstone Tunnels. Don't know if you've heard of them. Of course I've heard of them. Well, you got a big old obelisk down there. It seems to be randomly bringing these items down. How do you figure this out? Well, we happen to deal with the occupants that were down there. One of them happened to be keeping a journal. Well, several people kept seem to have been keeping a journal that they didn't May use. I see this journal? Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> she looks through the journal. We see her nod as she reads the various pages. And you have proof that this actually happened? Well, we found one of these coins, but may we didn't I, see it may I see, may I see the coin? Yeah, whoever has the coin, give it to her. <laughs> Being as we don't know who actually has it. Doink. You hand over the coin or set it on her desk. She picks it up. Ah, yes, a shilmere. Disgusting elven make. Nonetheless, it is something that I am willing to collect. So, I will buy the coin, she holds it up, and the journal off of you, and provide you with assistance to get wherever you're going. Or at least directions. Do we have a deal? I believe we do. She uh, puts the coin into the drawer with all the other surface world items, closes that, locks it back up, and then she goes to a wall safe where she enters a combination, uh, pulls out a bag from a nearby cabinet, and then proceeds to count stacks of coins and eventually passes them over to you. I believe 50 platinum is sufficient for the journal and the coin. I won't argue with that. So, where exactly do you need to go? Well, we'd prefer to get back up to the top side, but we need to get to Everlight Grove. Well. Well, Neverlight Grove has a way to get to the surface, so that would be one option. Though it's not... But Finished. Your better option, if you want a direct route that is easy to get in and out, would be Blindenstone, the Deep Dwarf City. That's another touring art city, right? Is there the deep, deep or not Deep Gnome? Deep Gnome. Okay. I was about to say, wait, I saw your hand on Deep Deep Dwarf. <laughs> there are other Deep Dwarf cities. I know. I, just... I, I said Dwarf instead of Gnome. Everything is loading so slow at roll 20 today. Well, guys. Well, actually. What do you guys think? We had to. What is it? Neverlight? Is it Everlight or Neverlight? Neverlight. There is never light. Well. Like she. The Blinden Stone near where a stool needs to go? Neverlight Grove is where a stool needs oh. to go. Yes. That's his home. But. Um, Jim Jar. Opsy and Turvy all come from Blindenstone. Yes. And Blindenstone has the complete fastest route up to the surface, whereas Neverlight has an incomplete route. Now, Elsa will point out that Neverlight Grove is north northwest of Grakulstu, so you could go there by land and then head north e continue heading northeast from there to get to Blindenstone if you can't get up at the Neverlight Grove. Well, that sounds like a better, probably the most opportune route, though, to be able to get the little guy back to where he belongs. Otherwise, if you were going directly to Blindenstone, you could <laughs> take a boat across the Dark Lake as far as you can to the northern shores and then walk from there to Blindenstone. Well, what do you guys think? Well, let's for sure get 
stool home. Vanek, anything to add? I mean, we can yeah, get stool home and then get out of this dreadful place. Alrighty. I'm not really sure who stool is. He's the mushroom on John's back there. Right. Sure. Open up the backpack. If you've, and if, you've already, if you've already promised to take him home, we should do that. Well, Miss Hillstock. Hillstock? Yeah. I believe we're going to be heading Everlight. Neverlight first. Very well. She gives you directions in order to get to Neverlight Grove so that you will not need to make checks that you are traveling the right direction. Well, that concludes our business as well. Did we ever get our rations restocked? I don't believe so. Yeah, Athos, you look like you need some armor, don't you? I will admit my equipment is not quite up to par. Well, let's go buy some of them shops, get you what you need, get some rations, and get the hell out of here. To be honest, all I really need is some other armor. You have your rape here? Yep. I didn't start with nothing on the office because I wasn't a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could have had you start as a slave here. I went in the Dwerg city. If we wanted to. Elder Scrolls rules. You always start as a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have been able to pay for a round of their food or such, whatever. If I was a prisoner. It would have been the thought that counts. <laughs> okay, the party could buy you as their slave. A sexy slave? Yes. <laughs> hey, God, please tell me we're not walking by the slaves. I mean, they're everywhere. Don't need Aaron drooling. There are literally slaves all throughout the market. It's one of their main uh, exports. I know. And, and imports. If you want to buy a slave, there are plenty available. I don't think some of our party members would appreciate that. Mm-mm. Not if you want to get heals. Nah, I kind of need that heals. <laughs> That's why you just buy a cleric slave. <laughs> <laughs> so sudden leather armor? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I have, right? Yeah, I believe that's what we bought, yeah. You should have it on your feet. Nope, sure don't. I wasn't made aware that I it was actually bought for me. That's why I made the list and we went through all that. But yes, everybody but the Athos should have whatever items they had requested. I don't have anybody's items because I deleted all those. Except for what we still needed. But I think all you wanted was studded, studded leather. Yeah. I don't think I wanted anything. Yep, you didn't want anything said. was said. I need to account for some action. All that money. I know, 50 platinum pieces. Let's spend it right now. I mean, it's 500 gold. Still, that's a decent price for a ratty old notebook and simple coin. Granted, it is a collector's item, but... I imagine if there was an auction house in Grackles, dude. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's Grackles, dude. As Joe pointed out, they're not much for the pretties. Grackles, dude? They've got, like I said, they've got some. They're much more common in drow culture. Pretty items? Oh, items. I thought you were talking about slaves. No, they got... Pretty? We, I know they've got tons of different slaves. But, um... You, you gonna do a, any sort of haggling with your armor, or...? No, I mean, you're not going to pay for it. Just gonna go flat press, Joe? Yeah. Alright. Alright. Got that yet. Then, I think we're gonna buy, like, 300 rations or something. Uh, 60 rations we can buy. If we can buy the place and sell them, right? There are plenty of places that sell rations. And then we'll buy 60 rations. They sell them for the standard going price. Alrighty. It'll be about 300 something. You know what? What do they have for adventuring class slaves? Adventuring class slaves? Yeah. He's so glad you asked. I know he is. He probably had some interesting characters to have. Oh, he went robotic. Don't tell me I'm talking to a Warforged. He got too excited. <laughs> no, no, I was just... I had to press the uh, number 
his inner techno came out. So. I did not have any pre created for this. <laughs> but you sounded so excited. Well, I didn't think it'd be this so hard exciting. to. I didn't think it'd be this hard to uh, find, like, random NPCs. Obviously, the vast majority of them are just base commoner type slaves. But, at least in regards to adventurers. Uh, they've got, they've got Quagoths, they've got Orcs, they've got Dwarves, and there's even a few Kobolds and Goblins, and, obviously, Humans. Could, could go for one of them good old Kobold sidekicks, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, that could cause issues with training the dragon. A Kobold? I could see them rising up. Right. <laughs> You don't want to give. A, I mean, the dragon doesn't know any languages. So well, it's not like they have yeah. some secret language we'll communicate with. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's gonna learn all the languages that we all speak eventually. Pretty much, it'll learn like any child, and it'll learn extremely fast. Oh, you know what? I will take two kobolds. You're buying two kobolds. Yeah. They won't live very long, Sam. I know. <laughs> but they can at least attend to the dragon. Make her feel happy. Feel powerful. I mean, it is in their nature. That is true. Kobolds will fight to the death. Well, kobolds are selling for... Ten... Really? Ten... I find ten that silver. Oh, well, it suggested ten gold. I was like, that's way too cheap. That's what it suggested, Joe. <laughs> we'll take 25. <laughs> <laughs> Have our own little kobold army. <laughs> I'm not making kobold slaves. That, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a shit ton of action to come. <laughs> uh, we just have to send them in and hope they don't get wiped out by AoE. Fireball? Exactly. Fireball now! <laughs> right now! <laughs> Lady Fireball there. <laughs> like I know they're expendable. Okay, that... What? That... That that makes more sense. They sell the kobolds for about 200 gold. Each? 200 gold each. That makes a lot less sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, the basis is for, uh... A human sells for five... A human commoner sells for 500 gold. Goblins and kobolds are worth 40% the cost of the average uh, human. I'll hold off on the kobold until I find That Literally, somebody made a chart comparing skilled hirelings and compared it to the cost of slaves in the Roman Empire. Interesting. And did a combination of gold to uh, denarii. So they, they actually got <laughs> prices. <laughs> based off what the Romans sold their slaves for. I have to imagine that's an entirely different economy than Dracula's Duke itself. You're right. There's probably a lot more in Rome. It'd be cheaper in Rome. <laughs> so it should be cheaper, because it's a comparison. <laughs> no. I'm not wrong. Alright. <laughs> so what do they got for... like? Do they have like a set of clerical adventure? As it so happens, they do. How much for that? They recently took a slave from a uh, abbey. It's okay. So, 650 gold. Alrighty, we'll do that. Let's cross off the gold bolts, we'll take the human. Now another cleric will right. be a little bit more. Well. You have added Sister Miriam to your party. Now they just have the standard manacles, right? Yep. Well, she's got the uh, magic suppressing ones because she is technically a, a clerical nature. Oh, mass, mass, mass. Well, might as well go get her some gear. Head out. Well, what will you be buying, Sister Miriam? Well, for one, normal clothes. Basically, normal clothes, a backpack, and then whatever she needs to protect herself with. Well. 
Uh, she's not used to wearing any kind of armor because she was literally a nun. She has no combat experience. That's just a healer. She is essentially purely for healing. That would be good. What does she know? She knows uh, the cantrips Light, Sacred Flame, and Thaumaturgy. She knows Cure Wounds, Bless, Detect Evil and Good. Well, she has access to the entire cleric list, technically. But she's got up to second level spells. Yeah, whatever. Like I said, she needs. But is she sexy? I don't know if sexy is the word. Mm. But does she know it? <laughs> Can she learn it? I don't know. Does one learn sexy? I don't know, creepy caveman. <laughs> what voice did I switch to? D creepy caveman. Yeah, that exact one, yeah. Don't worry, he will come up with an image. It's time. I've got an image already. Oh, he's got an image. I'm, I'm literally writing out... I'm creating a character sheet right now. <laughs> so, but is there anything else you need to do? Standard cost supply for her equipment. So pretty much all you're saying is she just needs clothing and a backpack. I mean, that's all she wants. Alrighty. Hi, Mimi. What are you if doing? You, if you want to give her other things, that is up to you. You come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, you gotta help me out here. Come on. Oh boy. Oh. Come on. Nonetheless. Do you do anything else while you're still in Grakostig? I personally don't have anything else. What about you guys? Nope. Nothing that I need. Nothing. I'm take stool home. Alright. You guys getting ready to leave then? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I guess as a cleric, she would probably want a mace. Alrighty. Get her a mace. Can you sit? Do you not want to sit? No, I don't want to sit. She just stand using them big beagle ears. Alright. Yeah. So, is the um, entire group that we came here with still coming with us, or are some of them staying here? I don't think any of them are intending to stay here, buddy. Trust acting. But, uh, you make ready to head out? Do you do anything? You just decide to leave? Gather the group? That's my intent. Just double checking one last time. Anyone else doing anything? No. no the, the people of this town are really okay with us, like, walking around with a baby dragon. I doubt it. You get a lot of stares. And a lot of people don't think it's real. A lot of people think it's some kind of fake and you're using it to get attention. I'll take that. I thought for sure they'd be, like, either trying to steal it from us or trying to kill us. Really think a man looking like me is going to have a red dragon? <laughs> I mean What do you look like? I guess You don't want to know what I think you look like I mean, you just gotta see my token Yeah, and what about that makes you look like you wouldn't be able to have a red dragon I, 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 I just feel that most Rhaegar probably wouldn't assume this guy this handsome mug is gonna have a red dragon That mother like he's been banned from school <laughs> you do have that reputation about muscle. I'm glad I'm not just gonna go and I have to free some kids from this library. It just really made it worse. Yeah, we probably would have thought you had some ulterior motive. Ulterior motive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gather the party and you quickly notice a couple things. Well, All right, you notice the method. lack of a couple things. Topsy and Turvy are gone. Oh no. Alright, Jim Jar, where'd they go? He just shrugs. I'm not their keeper. Do you know what at least where they might have been going? Or anything. Being as you can talk to them more than anybody else, I think. The only place I can think of is they went home. Got tired of waiting. Well, oh, they're dead. That's their issue. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. Dumb idea. I'm gonna stick with the people and know how to fight. And he points at you, and then he does like finger guns towards little John and Aaron and all the way around. So, uh, who's the new guy? And the new gal? And he winks at Sister Miriam. 
blames the Arthas. Sellsword betrayed, but right now they've taken me as a part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's the new girl? That's Sister Miriam. And he immediately starts to lean like her direction. Hey, how's it going? Jim, you know, you know after the fact to eat you, right? <laughs> you have an eye for the finer things. I can respect that. Looks. Ah, I see you're a man of taste as well. Yes, <laughs> I would say so. Nonetheless. Oh, and uh, do we know him? And he points to your hammer. He's payment. I guess. Right, right. It's not the reward payment. I was expecting. Your Wouldn't payment. Your payment is a drooling dwarf in a suit of armor with a spike through his head. Again, wasn't exactly expecting this kind of a reward. Being as it's. Eh. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Probably I mean, for the best. We could put it out of its misery after we leave. <laughs> Eldeth shakes her head. No. It deserves to suffer. Oh, my... Eldeth. Better we put it to good use than they do. I have to agree. It'll be quite useful if we have to clear out paths. Aye. Plus, looking at can it, we, we probably... Can we technically fight. use, um, stool to, like, communicate with it? If you really want to make a mental connection to it. I don't think you want to make a mental connection to it. Unless you want to lose your sanity, probably. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nonetheless, you make ready to head back out once more. I've rearranged the tokens, but if you want to change your marching order, you are welcome to. Well, now that I can see in the darkness, I can definitely take up front. Your hammerer and Sister Miriam obviously follow behind you. We'll have Zerus be up front with me. Those that can't see in the dark will be back by Aaron. Well, I think that's... what? Who, who still can't see in the dark? Uh... me. These guys... Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah, just line up uh, over one. So why are we still traveling in the dark? I mean, we're not traveling in the dark, dark, but because of Aaron. The Dawnbringer's out. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be closer up front, to be honest. Oh, the that... Dawnbringer goes out 60 feet, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right. Diathos, let's have you switch with Zed, then. There. That should be a good, good marching order. Question. What is this thing behind me? That is a you woman. Know. <laughs> you, you guys already forgot Lindsay? No, I you might not have seen one before. Just looking at no, the token. No, she's been here for a while. Look. Remember that thing you made a baby uh, with? That's what that yeah. is. <laughs> that, uh -huh. my young friend, is a woman. Wait, who made a baby with who? A wonderful, had a magical, baby? Mystical, mystifying thing. You'll understand when you're older. <laughs> I guess I never, like, took a look at her token she, that much. She's part of... She's from the, uh... She, he's a, tribe, I believe. Yeah. Uh, do I have the man? Yeah. They're no, I they're don't. a tribe of barbarians that are like extremely. They they adhere to druidic beliefs, but they're how to describe it? They're militant Amish. <laughs> Amish. Yeah, they don't think that you should have modern technology, to the point that they attack people that build up cities and towns. Because you shouldn't do that. All I'm imagining <laughs> nice. now is a Amish Armstrong from Full Metal. Why? I don't know. That was the most mitten sort of thing I've ever heard you said. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that is exactly where we are. Well, you're gonna start traveling from Grackle Stug up to Neverlight. And Althea will be right in the middle. Keep her as close as we can. Althea. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you already forget about the dragon? <laughs> I keep forgetting. No, I don't forget that you have her. I forget her name. Well, yeah, because she just got... I figured out the name three days ago. Or two yeah. days ago. No, not even two days ago. One day ago. We need to find a better token for that. The standard token is just the same red dragon token, but small. 
But yes, when so as a, this player, when one of you spellcasters can do polymorph, please teach it to the dragon. Why? It makes it easier to go into cities. Just think a little on that, Tyler. Wasn't that something that they learned naturally anyway? Later on in their existence, like a couple hundred years, right? Yeah, pretty much. But you said teach it to the dragon. Yes, teach it to the dragon. Let him know it's early. <coughs> the dragon make, ain't gonna make it that far. As soon as you, you die, I'm taking the dragon out. <laughs> but, uh... So, what pace will you be traveling at? I think normal will probably be the best. Next pace. Well, if you travel at a normal pace, it should take you just over a ten day to get to Neverlight Grove. So a week. Just no, over. ten days. Yeah, a week. Which is uh, a week in Faerun is ten days. They just don't call it a week. <laughs> they might. So, all speculation. Yes. So you begin heading out. As you head out, you uh, you travel a few days with basically nothing coming up. That's one d six. Yep. Well, it's just how many days before something happens. Oh, I'm showing us that. <laughs> we got six days. <laughs> well, it's a d6 plus one, so... It is seven days before you even run into anything. So seven days worth of... Rations. Yes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Well, do we also want to try searching? That is up to you. I'm fine with searching. Especially if you don't know what it is. Oh, wait, no. I think a natural explorer did it. That's it. Okay. There it is. Okay, so we couldn't get, we can't get lost to anyways, Joe, because I've got natural explorer for Underdark. Alright. Uh. Yeah, when we forge, we find twice as much now than we normally do. That'll make a difference. So are you going to choose to forage during any of this period? Oh yeah. And difficult terrain does not slow our group's travel anymore. Well, there's difficult terrain. I know. And then, yeah. <laughs> then there's... And then dark. there's difficult. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm always alert to danger while engaged in another activity like traveling and stuff. So, what do we need for forage? Is that survival? I believe it is survival. Just one of us, or... Hey, hello. One of you will decide. Good job, Tyler. Well, I was hovering over and it's like I went to click the little thing to see what options I could do, but I just clicked it. Mm -hmm. Hope you found something. I mean, before we've had multiple people foraging. Yeah, even so. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. You need to go potty? No. Finally? Yeah. Not yet. Oh, sorry, I thought I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do not find much, or really anything, on Jump. the day that you go out, Medic. So you'll need to draw on the rations for that day. Alrighty. So for the second day, he's gonna go out and search. I need to redeem myself. You ain't redeeming shit. <laughs> Alright, what's... so... You managed to find enough food for 16 people. Excellent, so we have one extra ration after that. Or somebody can just be hungry and decide to eat extra. One extra ration. <laughs> I want seconds. Oh, wait, we got the dragon. So our rations would technically be 16, wouldn't they? The little dragon. Got a... Or are we letting that hunt on its own? Uh, it'll hunt on its own. Hopefully not get killed. Actually, yeah, you probably shouldn't, because there's yeah. not a whole lot of things to hunt down here. And the things that are down here are probably bigger than it. Yeah, most things down here are pretty dangerous. Also, she's very upset at having to eat mushrooms. I'm sorry. We should have stocked up on kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> if you were willing to pay the money for it, then you could have got it. No. Also, I would have been very against that. Eating kobolds to your dragon? Yes. Well, 
What do you mean a moral contract? Moral position. <laughs> Stop it. Let him eat. I know John would have no issue with it. But uh, yes, then the third day, who is looking for food? Uh, I can attempt again. Not as good. You find some food, but you only find enough for four people. Alrighty. We're gonna run out of all the rations already. <laughs> you planned so poorly. Do better. Then. I forgot how big of a group we had. <laughs> well, I was also hoping we could forage a little bit better. I don't do know. better. I keep forgetting we're in the Underdark. Yep, not easy finding food in the Underdark. But fourth day. Uh, Eldeth, she's a pretty good ranger. Eldeth will go looking. Mm. And come back with enough food for three people. <laughs> Got TPK running out of rest. <laughs> oh, you'll just start gaining levels of exhaustion. Yeah, that's an issue. That'll be the TPK. <laughs> Possibly. She did not go at the poopies. She just wanted to eat the poopies. Oh, lovely. But on the fifth day, I'll do it. Venek finds food. Redeemed himself. <laughs> I redeemed myself. He finds enough for eight people. Oh. You have to redeem yourself enough. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm just a boy. <laughs> a boy has to learn. Alrighty. So the sixth of the day. You must try the chances, otherwise I can. I'll do it again. We got a little John. <laughs> John pushes you out of the way. We, we turned it into a race. <laughs> you managed to find enough food for 16 people. Between the two of you. If it were right. Alright, well, I right. went 48 rations ready. Brian, how many rations did you have on you? I don't know. Well, give me a second, though. I have my ten that came with my hair that I can <coughs> Okay, well, we'll just say Brian has no rations since he doesn't even know what he has. I don't have any rations. You were carrying the drow that. stuff. Yeah, doesn't mean I was kind of touching. I was saying, I think you guys used up that stuff pretty quick. Maybe I don't remember either. But on the seventh day, before you when even God go looking down for rations, you uh, are traveling when suddenly you feel tremors in the ground. Great. As you pass through a winding corridor, a crack opens in the wall and lava begins to pour in. You must run. Oh, okay, that's Kelly. <laughs> that's our lava alarm going on. <laughs> yeah, <we're going> lava. <laughs> It's a sad beagle in the way. Why is the sad beagle? Why are you sad? Why are you sad? It's because you haven't pooped all day, and every time I let you outside, you just want to eat poop? I'll <laughs> do it. Yeah, I'll do it. She doesn't want to poop unless she has a backup reserve ready. Uh, <laughs> gotta replenish it. She's, she's, yeah, she's uh, planning for the future. I hate that so uh, much. <laughs> then they want to come and give you kisses right afterwards. Yep. No, she's she does not. <laughs> Allow me to share. My oh, does. Damn, that was good. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, I'll need everyone to make a deck save to try and run from the lava before it pours onto them. Uh... Will I get an advantage on that? Uh, yeah, you know, long standard advantage for the barbarian. Barbarians. Don't fail me now. Fuck. Mm. Oof. Oh, no. okay. Well, I figured he'd fail. <laughs> Here comes the sun. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, that one sounds fine. That's all I care about. 
So, starting with the hammer, he takes 23 fire damage as he waddles slowly through the lava. Well, I don't know what his life is, so. He got pain, so. He's a little crispy. He's but he, he, I know she didn't do one because was she for me. Now, what what are we talking about? A little, like, a little, little bit of burnt or Anakin on Mustafa? That's what Maren did when she got a 15. Oh, did, is hers not public? Is hers set to always whisper? Uh, no, no hers is up there. It's up there. I'll talk. She's up, up there. Farther. Right above Zed. Oh. Oh. That's why I don't see it. She made it out, but I feel bad for Eldeth. Uh... Oh. So, Eldeth goes to zero, running out. Uh, She's gonna need some healing. Vanek. Wow. We yeah, also have Miriam, other. but I don't see Miriam's roll. Oh, there it is up there. Yeah. Uh, we made it. Not Eloise. Hard to death. Eloise is also. Eloise dies out. And that's no. oh, that's this one, right? Yep. Eloise just died. I'm sorry, why did she die? Lava. The lava. Oh, okay. I'm I don't think sorry, you've made a save Alright. I've been doing Mei Mei things. Alright, um, Dex. Dex saves. No. Just run out of the lava. I need to die. You make it out of the lava. That too. But Prince... Lava. Prince Darendel next to you is not, and he suffers some pretty severe burns, but does not go down. The only one who's down, but not outright dead, is Elda. Manic? Unless you want to deal with Darendel. Yeah, I'll heal, um, Del. Oh, where's it? Where's it? Yeah, I'll do cure wounds on her. So you're walking back into the lava to heal her? I'm going to do healing word on her. <laughs> Range of 60 feet. <laughs> Actually, wait. Um... Would you say it's still dim here? It's not dim, dude. It's lava. No. Well, honey. <laughs> the lava's light. Dawnbringer's bringing light. Oh, yeah, Dawnbringer. So you're casting healing word on Eldath? Yeah. I don't know why it did it twice. I'll take the first one. Yep. She will try and scramble away from the lava. And she does much better this time. Getting out. Oh, poor Louise. Yeah. The Athos is now heartbroken. He's a man that apparently loves all things pretty. Yeah, it's a month to swan. I can't really pretty bits. <laughs> and Lindsay is also quite upset considering that was who she escaped the drought with. Oh, uh, she escaped through her. Do I have a go? Yes. Nonetheless, you've lost. And another day goes by. You choose to scavenge, I'm assuming? Yes, we will. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else scavenge with him! God damn! <laughs> well, Lucas doesn't find anything. Not a lot around here. Well, now, now we're down to 15 rations per day. <laughs> but, uh, no, you. Diathos is able to find some food, but not much. You find enough for two people. <laughs> and then you keep trapped. Oh, uh. Every. Every morning, I'll use Inspiring Leader on the party members. That's that too. And it gives everyone. Hit points, um, hip, uh, temporary hit points to my level plus my proficiency bonus. So everyone's get six temporary hit points at the start of each day. As long as you're in the oh no, it's my charisma modifier. So it's my hit points equal to my level and charisma modifier. My charisma modifier is three, so seven. I could have made the difference. On I know I'm only, I'm casting on the party members. <laughs> to choose up to six. I can't choose everybody. I know. <laughs> Oh well, we'll find a replacement NPC, I'm sure. Replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Say, it's not hard to come across in this game. 
Joe's just making sure that he limits it. <laughs> I, I literally am. <laughs> I, I re-rolled a random encounter because I rolled for encountering escaped slaves again. <laughs> it's like, no, no. <laughs> Roll again. Lava. There we go. Something different. So basically what he's saying is our max party size could be 16. You could have a lot of party members. It, it is possible to have a pretty big party in this campaign. <laughs> I'm sure we'll need it towards the end. But, yes, your next ninth day? Uh, is anyone eighth. going out? Ske- no? Wasn't uh, Lava's day seven? Lava was on day seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that we was didn't, okay. So. didn't do our ration thing until after. Yeah, eighth day. Eight. All right, let's get a group going. Not finding much. <laughs> we don't have much. Tyler? <laughs> I will save this group. Nope. Maybe Eldev can help. <laughs> nope! Oh, oh guys! There's some lava over here! <laughs> Oh, Zed finds food. <laughs> and his backpack. Look at all these rations I found, guys. <laughs> no, he manages to find enough for five people. I yell the note. I yell up the, at the plants. <laughs> Where are you? I'm hungry. Well, we have one person going hungry. And, uh... Eldeth comes back, and she's got some stuff. <laughs> but what is some stuff? She she she's picked, she's picked up a handful of things. I'll look them over. Uh, well, you look, you look them over, and uh, she's got some mushrooms. She's got some rocks that are shaped like mushrooms. Must be here, here. Not much else. Did she bring home enough for at least one person? Yeah, there's enough for at least one person here. Okay, so we're out of rations completely now. Alright, who's eating it? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I missed her to just, uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms? I don't <laughs> And mushroom rocks. <laughs> and mushroom rocks? <laughs> yep. Well, <laughs> I look at all the mushrooms and I go, uh, I'm pray over this and uh, bless it and uh, purify food and drink. <laughs> all right. And then I'm going to eat the one that everybody's afraid of. All right. It doesn't taste too bad. It's, it's edible. And then uh, your nose grows twice in size. Oh, God. Good thing I had a small nose to begin with. <laughs> You now have advantage on perception checks that involve smell for the next three hours. Ew. I bet we smell wonderful. <laughs> I take a big step away from Lucas. Oi! Oogliance! Oh, Oogliance! Oh, yeah! Pretty sure John would be the one you would want to step away from. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say? Don't scream at me! <laughs> It's just been a very long time since you've had a bath. Very long time. I can't stop a latch of inconvenience. <laughs> you can shut up. Shut it up there, Mr. Big Old God Man. <laughs> Will not have an avalanche of inconvenience. No, but Venix got googliest oogliest. <laughs> Sounds like his eyes should be bigger. It's, it's from Duralius and Associates. It's the one that gives him... This scale of the north. It's been so long. Oh, I can't. I can't get rid of it. Uh, day nine. Yep. More survival. Uh. Well, you find some food. Oh, that was a good roll. You find enough food for fourteen people. <laughs> so one person. Hey, my man. Whoa. Whoa! I mean, <laughs> Diathos 
somehow only manages to find enough for nine. <laughs> I rolled twice many... <laughs> as many dice. So we got, what, 24 that day? Yeah, so I'm guessing these rolls decide if we actually find something and you make a roll to see how much it actually is. Yeah. And I, depending on what the rolls are, I change, like, so if you roll right at it, it's like a D6. If you roll below a certain uh, amount, it'll change to a D4. Below a certain amount, I don't roll anything. So for you getting a crit, I roll 2D6. Do I get a roll in the crit chart? <laughs> Not for that. <laughs> uh, those are combat crits. <laughs> I attack our hunger. <laughs> Stab, punching yourself in the gut. <laughs> I'm not hungry anymore, guys. <laughs> anyway. Alright. Day 10 or 11? 10. Day 10. Which means we should be basically at Neverlight. Well, you still need to make a survival check because you don't get there on day 10. Shit. <laughs> My man! <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> I knew there's a reason I liked you. He finds enough food for nine people again. I knew there was a reason I liked <laughs> me too. I rolled the exact same numbers as last time. <laughs> there's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> well, we finally made it to our destination. Three rations left. But uh, while you're out there, you find, Lucas, a mushroom that is two feet tall with red and orange stripes across a beige cap. Two foot tall mushroom. This will feed the entire party. It, it, it would provide a lot of food. Can I double check to make sure I know what it is? Make a nature check. Please do not fail me. Please do not fail me. Please do not fail me. Yes, you have heard of these. Okay. The Timask. Also known as the Devil's Mushroom. <laughs> ah, hell no! Didn't someone eat that? Yeah, Tyler ate that! Did he? They are very poisonous. I remember somebody eating one of these things. Maybe. Pretty sure Tyler did it. He got lucky or something. He got paralyzed. Nonetheless. I'm not picking it. <laughs> not well, touching it. I know what it is. Who's eating and who's not? Because there's only enough food for nine people right now. Eldeth will try and go out. I shall go out. Poor Eldeth. Well, uh, you find enough food for one person, little John. That's not good enough. And uh, Eldeth comes back, and she's a little soot-stained. Not sure how I will find food. Venek, go! I choose you! Venek is slacking on. Seems so. Tyler. Sorry, what? What am I doing? Survival. I know food. Oh, hey! I got he distracted. To find some food. He finds it up for five people, which I believe feeds the party. Yeah, that should be 15. Alright, reminder to self. Make sure we have a lot. We might need to get, uh, porters again. Also, by this point in the journey, uh, Sadith has started coughing pretty hard, and he seems to have a lot of strange growths on his face. Like they blister me? And, no, like blisters and That's stuff. Great. No, I can't help him. Has your compatriot always been like that? Well, ever since we met him. Is he contagious? It doesn't seem to be. So far. And have you tried to figure out something to help? I believe Aaron tried. Maybe. I ain't exactly good with the uh, medicine time. Uh, let me take a peek. I'm great. <sighs> he has a cold. I mean, he's suffering from some kind of, you would guess, parasitic infection. I thought you were just going to tell me illness, and I was going <laughs> to walk in there and <laughs> rub Mimi's butt in your face. But, okay. Um... <laughs> I'm guessing that would be like a lesser, greater restoration thing. Greater restoration. Uh, yeah, of course it is. Well, I mean, we could also like try inducing a fever to kill the parasite. Fireball? Fireball! No. <laughs> no. That would cure him. No. There'd be no more parasite. No. 
nonetheless, you approach the area that should be Neverlight Grove. And while there are many passages that lead the direction, most of them are pretty narrow, do not look comfortable going through. The one that you were told about, the one that actually fits normal-sized creatures, is formed by a drying underground stream, dimly lit by glowing lichen. You don't know what lichen is, it's moss. When asked about his illness, didn't he say something along the lines of like you wouldn't understand or something like that? I don't remember what he said. Yeah, it's been a while, but I vaguely remember him being... He was quite, uh... Protective of its nature or something like that. That. <laughs> Is he infested with spiders? How long has he been sick? Since you met him. Oh. Yeah. Is he infested with spiders? Is that the Athos actually asking? Yeah. I, I sure hope not. Who are you asking? The, the general group outside of his earshot? I got no clue. Actually, no, I wouldn't ask that, because I wasn't there for that conversation. But I'll put that in all of your heads. <laughs> well, I think it's time Stool leads the way. Or, at least, it's out here up front. Set him down up front. Try and communicate with him. See if he'll throw his spores out. Yeah, pop his spores. he knows which way we need to go. He tells you you need to go forward. This way. I go the way he's telling me. The way, the way he's telling us is the only path that's big enough for yep. normal sized people. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll continue down that path and still kind of leading the way while staying near us. Don't do it, you're fine. But, uh, you no. move forward through the path. Um. Until eventually it starts to open up. Ah, damn, look at all those trees. Fuckball. Oh. Hold on there, we ain't burning things down unless needed. <laughs> I wasn't saying that in character. Let's just get into initiative just in case. <laughs> I love the just in case. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are going to do here. Let's see, make sure my... Oh, Alright. Well, Lucas, you got the initiative. How dark is it? Uh... Check. Really not say. A uh, luminescent lichen grows across the entire cavern and on the larger mushrooms, bathing the grove in soft hues of yellow, blue, and violet. The entire grove is suffused with dim light. Alright, so it's dim, not dark. Well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna try to be sneaky. And Stool's just walking straight in. Yeah, should we let Stool go first? Where yeah, is, uh, I'm just following him. Oh, I don't even see Stool. On the initiative. Right in front. Right in front. Oh, I forgot to give him initiative. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow behind the stool, holding that. Alright, Tiantos. Same as well. It's a stool show. Little John. I follow stool. Zed. Walking with him. I'm gonna follow the people. I'm gonna have to follow because he's not much room. Venic. <laughs> gonna walk behind little John. With when he follows stool. <laughs> Alright. Well, Stool starts walking forward. Hopping down these terraces. Be hilarious if he has a movement of 10 feet only. I mean, he doesn't have. Yeah, he's, he's got a movement speed of 10 feet. That was a dash for him. <laughs> gonna keep following him. <laughs> oh, hello there, Mr. Drow. Hoping he's releasing his spores too. But, uh. And he's not asking him to. These. He did earlier, so. but these terraces are quiet and calm. The only sounds here are soft, ploopy splashes as water drips from stalactites above under the caps of oversized mushrooms sprouting from the musty earth. Further below, down in the main area, pale cream and beige stalks grow thick and tall, resembling a surface world forest. 
Fungi grow in profusion everywhere, and it's hard to find anything resembling a path between them. The giant caps of Zerkwood mushrooms obscure your view of the cavern's feeling, but luminescent fungi there give off a shimmering aura. With each step on the soggy ground, a rank scent of decay rises from the ground around you. Crap. Aaron, you need to do something about Dawnbringer. Yes, you do. Dawnbringer, I have been not really here tonight, but we need to have a little heart-to-heart. Apparently, it is of great importance that right now you sheathe yourself. Make a persuasion check. Or we could all die. Does anybody have, like, anything to give me any kind of advantage? (laughs) (laughs) Applause. Thumbs up. <laughs> well, what happened? She kind of convinced Donbringer to go Quiet. out. Quiet. She doesn't like it, but she deactivates. She's ready to turn on at any second. She's very unstable right now. Mm, good. Oh, good Talks. It is your turn, Aaron. Yes. I'm good. I have no idea what's going on. Her, I think. The fan did in some sort of too. Uh, okay. Apparently it's got a... What the app to. <laughs> uh, Zed, were you going to follow up now that the way's open? Yeah. Your held movement. They will essentially all just start. We're back. You, Lucas. <coughs> Do I see this giraffe? I mean, yes. She is just standing up there. Just standing there, not doing nothing. Well, the, uh... The plateau rises higher than the other terraces, screened by a natural fence of soaring Zerkwood stalks. But there is some muffled murmuring that you can hear from up, the, uh, up that direction. Alright, so are these going upwards or downwards? What? The ones you are going down are going down. And this is up? And that's up, yes. They could have made that so much better looking. But, uh, go sneaky sneaks. Oh, sneaky sneaks. How long, how far down is it? Uh, each terrace, I believe, is ten feet. I'll go right there. But I will motion okay, for everybody else to try and be silent. Diathos. Hmm. But there's a violet beauty right over there. I should introduce myself. Please keep it in your pants. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just as sneak. Or, or, I guess this might be the better way to go. It's up here, huh? Mm, looks like it goes up that way, or is that, is that a pathway up there? Uh, yeah, there is a pathway up here. Okay. It's me. All right, little John. I'm hanging out with stool. Strong. Quiet. They move when he moves. All right. In which case, Zed. Nope. Not very stealthy. Yeah. Good. Eldeth will attempt to sneak up. Very well. Go stealthy. Not very stealthy, but moving up this way. And that's my time. Right. I hate to do this. I think we might have to end this session early because there's a lot of stuff that's happening simultaneously, and I have not fully read this chapter. That's fine. I'm fine. I get it. Better be prepared than that. Yeah, there's. Dealing with the, I'm just. Are, I'm like skipping dealing with back. The dragon and, here. Yeah, that is a very good question. Uh, yeah. Quiet. Still haven't made any token for that. Try to keep her quiet. That's unlikely. Yep. Just to follow me. And teaching her to hunt. That's all. Sure. Stop. dragon. Yes, we're teaching her how to hunt. But we'll call it there for tonight.